Welcome to KCSE English. In today's episode, we are going to start our discussion of Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House. This book will preoccupy us for the coming three or four episodes. With me in the studio is Madam Brenda Midika, who has joined us to discuss this play. Brenda Midika is a teacher of English language and she is quite familiar with the Kenyan education system and the setting of examinations in the country. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Professor. Um, I will not be greeting you uh, in the traditional way because of the fact that uh, we have to keep a distance, but I believe you understand. Yes, I do. I know. Join me in a discussion of this play. Thank you, Professor, for this opportunity. Um, I, my first question is, when were you introduced to Hendrik Ibsen? Thank you very much. Um, I was introduced to Hendrik Ibsen a long time ago when I was a student at Kenyatta University in the 80s. And I studied quite a number of uh, plays by Hendrik Ibsen. And I remember when Henrik Ibsen's play, uh, An Enemy of the People, was uh, selected as a set text in, in Kenyan uh, schools, I was, I was given the opportunity to write the foreword to this book uh, sometime in the year... 2007 and after writing the introduction to this book I went ahead to also write um, uh, a workbook on uh, an enemy of the people and this was one of uh, the earliest um, uh, workbooks in the country I'm sure you understand very well that I'm really opposed to uh, the traditional guidebooks. Okay. Because what the traditional guidebooks are doing to our students is actually disastrous. And we do not end up teaching students to enjoy literature and to enjoy getting information and facts from a novel or a play. Instead, we simply push facts to them, which they use then to simply regurgitate in the, in the exam. And that is really not the kind of approach I would like us to take. Uh, that takes me to a very um, disturbing point. Um, what is your view about the teaching of literature, especially for KCSE? Uh, there are a number of things that I am comfortable with. And there are others I'm not very comfortable with. Okay. One of the things that uh, has happened in recent times that I really feel uh, is very important is the total integration of the teaching of literature and the teaching of uh, uh, language. In the sense that uh, right now, uh, Literature is examined in paper one, paper two, and paper three. And when you are teaching, for example, a doll's house, you must also take care of the grammar. And so the teaching is really integrated. And I've also seen there is also a shift even in the setting of the examination, which is very important. The, the, the deliberate attempt to actually bring the facts down to society, to our lives. So, for example, you'll, you'll encounter some, a question that says, imagine you are a Mrs. Linde in a doll's house. And you are faced with this kind of problem. Discuss, you know, uh, 
what you could do in such circumstances. Now, that is really bringing that information very close to the student. Uh, but do you think uh, teachers are preparing students to look at this text in such a perspective? This is uh, where uh, we are at the moment. And I think a good number of uh, teachers are now appreciating the fact that we should not be exam oriented. We should let our students learn and enjoy literature and actually get knowledge about life skills from literature. But uh, there are of course a few who still believe that the idea is to pass exams. And therefore you will find facts on every character, facts on every uh, thematic concerns, you know, thrown to the student instead of actually exciting students to engage the text and through that engagement they now draw these examples themselves. But you can actually throw to them an idea and then let the students actually come up with, with the ideas. In fact, you know, this is what we are doing in CBC, although we are still now starting at a lower levels. Okay. But we are assuming that uh, learners are not tabula rasa, so, so to speak. They have come with some knowledge. Ours is to create a democratic environment. And within that democratic environment, they find ways of expressing themselves and actually bringing out new knowledge. So the teacher's role is that of facilitating learning. The teacher is no longer a know-it-all ogre that goes to class to say, this is a doll's house. And now we begin with um, the character Nora. This is all about Nora. This is all about, uh, you know, Linda and so on. The, the, the teacher simply opens up the environment and asks the learner to engage the text. Yes, Professor, I, I'm really enjoying this. And I believe that most of the teachers out there, you are learning how we should engage our students in this, uh, in teaching literature. But Professor, to a very uh, crucial and com uh, important part of literature, that is poetry. And our students really struggle with poetry. How can teachers teach poetry so that it is enjoyable and the students can really appreciate the poetry? This question is very interesting. It takes me back to the kind of debates that we have had in this country for a long time. Now, think about it this way. Okay. Uh, in nursery schools, you people are lucky because you went to nursery schools. I didn't go to nursery school myself. Uh, uh, you people went to nursery schools. So how did you learn ABCs? We were straight to standard one, and it is in standard one that we begin learning uh, all those things. But now you have, you know, the luxury of going to, you know, baby class, then there is a pre-unit, then there is a... And then there is, also, of course, the lower primary. Now, if you look at all that period, learners learn most of the things they learn through poetry. It's true. And the whole process is just enjoyable. Kids are just laughing and singing and reciting poems and so on. So poetry at that very level is very interesting. Now, let me ask a question. How come when it gets to high school, the learners then find poetry difficult? Something that they enjoyed learning of virtually everything through at lower primary. There is a problem here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, sorry? Yeah, you are mentioning the problem, but teachers would really want to know what exactly is this problem. Yeah, I, I think the problem here is with uh, the teaching of literature, or generally, and then the teaching of poetry. Okay. We teachers, and I, I have to agree, we teachers seem to have killed poetry. Because we go to class, and the first thing we do when we are touching poetry is to say, 
Now read, look at that poem and identify onomatopoeia. Now look at that poetry and identify simile, mm -hmm. metaphors. Okay. Identify all the stylistic devices. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are listening to music and you are enjoying music, do you uh, say, now which, which, which uh, thread is that in the guitar? Yeah? Which, 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 which wire is that? You don't start with wires and threads and so on. You first of all just enjoy it. So what we did, I think, is, uh, is unfortunate. We started, we put the cut before the horse. Okay, yeah. Then we started bombarding students with terminologies in relation to stylistic devices. And we just got it wrong. And I think that is why we need to retrace our steps and start to see how we can engage the learners. First of all, just make them enjoy reading and writing poetry. Just not reading, reading and writing poetry and sharing poetry. So at early stages, we should be sharing poetry and actually just reading and enjoying what people, what each one of us is saying about poetry. Then from there, we can then proceed to other levels where we ask, why did he use this word? Why did he use this image? Later on, after enjoying the poetry. And I think that's where our problem is. So you are saying, because we are looking at KCSC, so you are saying that maybe at Form 1, uh, early Form 2s, that is now when we should actually begin to to, to ground them and try to, to make them enjoy poetry and ask them to write poems. They read to each other. Is, is that actually what you're suggesting? In fact, I'm suggesting something slightly bigger than that. Okay. That we can begin all the way from primary school. Mm. Because we started it in, lower, in, in primary, lower primary. We, start, we continue with that tempo of even teaching some things through poetry. And I'm on record for having said we can as well even teach mathematics through poetry. If you, for example, go back to some of our episodes in, 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 in this, uh, on this channel, you'll discover where I actually discuss the idea of actually teaching mathematics through literature. And we can teach many things through poetry. So first of all, we just make poetry interesting and enjoyable. And you can see, when we go to church, the first thing we do is praise and worship. We just sing and enjoy and dance then great. from there we get you know the word from the past and so on yes. this is how it should be really okay thank you thank you professor fellow teachers i hope we are learning here let's make poetry interesting for our students now professor back to our text adults house how do we teachers approach this text in our teaching thank you very much medica um first of all i want to say that um, in teaching of this play, I would recommend that we make all our learners read the play. And you see, learners come in at different levels. You see, you may be in a high school where the learners who come to that particular high school uh, are, you know, uh, well versed and they have read very many texts in primary school and so they don't find reading of say uh, a play like this one difficult. There are those learners who were not exposed to wide reading of storybooks at, at um, um, primary level. So you need to actually gauge what we call in teaching and generally in pedagogy Entry behavior. Mm -hmm. Entry behavior is very important. Where you go to class and you ask yourself, where are my learners? It is from there that you can now pitch your lesson. Yes. If your learners were not well exposed to wide reading, it basically means you will actually read this play with them fast, step by step up to the end. There are, there are other learners who will definitely find it interesting and they'll just read it and come to class and tell you, I have read. So you must gauge to know uh, where your learners are. And so the first thing is to check where your learners are. 
but make sure that they read the text and make sure that you tell your learners that reading the text once in class or reading it twice alone does not help because they will definitely encounter contextual questions where they are actually asked to place a certain excerpt within its context where they'll be asked about you know uh, questions from a given you know scene and they should actually virtually know all the scenes so the first thing we need to tell our learners and help our learners do is to actually make sure that they read the text not once not twice three times and above and make sure that even when we are going to teach them and i believe we are going to start discussing thematic concerns here even when we start talking about thematic concerns we are actually getting them to also participate in the process uh, professor i just have a question because i have seen it uh, with many teachers is that you come to class with a new text like adults house you look at your learners and then you say today we are going to learn to tea, to study adults house and immediately the teacher gives a brief introduction of the text and jumps into reading the text as the teacher is reading the teacher wants to analyze the characters the teacher wants to discuss the themes the teacher wants to 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 look at how the author is writing you see all that in a student probably those ones who have not been exposed how can teachers avoid such scenarios where learners get out of the, the out of the reading and they're like i didn't enjoy that reading you see how, how do we help teachers i think uh, what you're saying is very important teachers need to be a bit sensitive you see you may rush to class and you say today it's the synopsis then you are giving your understanding of the play yes. you have not given your learners the opportunity to give you their version so teachers are actually supposed to be uh, facilitators once you read the the first uh, you know scene with with your learners you reach a level where you are explaining certain things as you move then you let your learners let me give you an example in a uh, adults house you will notice that uh, the first the scene opens of course this is a christmas period mm -hmm. and you see nora and uh, and uh, helma and uh, and uh, the maid, uh, the maid interacting at that level when we just get to a certain stage where the the, the two are discussing Nora and uh, Mrs. Linde you get to a level where immediately you get to this end put aside and let let your students of course engage the conversation between the two you can see the enthusiasm yes. you can see the two ladies sharing so much about mm -hmm. you know their lives and so on and and so let your learners just bring out those things what what is for example linde telling um uh, nora about about her life what is uh, nora sharing about her life then from there the learners are starting to now get to understand character before you even go to other characters you've just gone up to maybe page you know page uh, 19 and we're just engaging so that you the, the learners from the word go are appreciating what the two ladies are are talking about so you are involving your students and as we say every answer is correct as long as it is supported yes. so you are appreciating what the students are telling you but at the same time making amends and saying no but maybe you may have read um, you know a different point there maybe somebody can see it this way so you as a teacher you are simply actually moderating the discussion but the first thing you have to do uh, brenda mm -hmm. is to create a democratic environment yes. you can never achieve what i'm talking about when you are teaching adults house if you have not created a democratic environment where learners are free to talk to you 
Okay, thank you. Now I've, I've learned a lot. You were talking about literature being an interactive subject where the students are the ones driving mm. the discussion. Yeah. Now, even as we are talking about uh, Linde and um, Nora, I'm trying to think about it. Um, maybe we can even tell our students, probably they are in Form 3, they are now studying the text. And tell. Imagine today you met your high school or your, your, your primary school friend. You know, how are you going to act about it? Mm -hmm. How are you going to, to, what are you going to discuss? Basically, what you are saying is that um, we should make literature real for our students. In fact, just to cut you uh, uh, short a bit, and I'm sorry about it, mm -hmm. you can even dramatize. Okay. Imagine you are a Linde mm -hmm. and uh, you meet uh, Nora. Nora. Engage to see what you say, what you can tell one another within our environment, mm -hmm. and and the students can can engage. Yeah, but you know, ask them to ask them to actually imagine of situations mm -hmm. where they meet, uh, you know, high school as you say, mm -hmm. a high school colleague, uh, you know, uh, a primary school, you know, a classmate, mm -hmm. and they have met on the streets. How do they interact? True. Now, that kind of thing is, you are doing a number of things. Mm -hmm. One, you are actually building confidence in your, your students. And that is actually one of the roles of literature. Building confidence and making our students capable of communicating with confidence. Exactly. Then, of course, the language. Mm -hmm. Enabling our students to develop language, language skills. Yes. And so, uh, in, in, in just teaching adults house, mm -hmm. we are actually scoring on so many fronts. Apart from that, even the themes mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. going back to the themes, then you, you'll, you'll start asking, you don't have to say, now you don't need not to go to class, and then you say, now, uh, the first theme here is women, or the role of women. Mm -hmm. You may ask, what do you, th you may ask the students to actually generate it. Exactly. Then when they generate, or if they are not generating, mm -hmm. you may float the idea that you think one of the themes that may may, you may want to explore is that of um, the importance of, and, or the role or the importance of women in society. Exactly. Now, but after introducing that, it is not your duty at that particular time to then start giving points, facts from the text. You are now actually, what you are doing, you are demeaning your students. Mm -hmm. Because now at that point, you need now to ask your students to now start digging out information. Of course, we see, you can give an example. Like if, for example, is the theme of uh, you know, the importance or the role of women. Now, you may give an example. You, for example, pick on uh, Linde and you say, Mrs. Linde does so much. There are certain things that she sacrifices yes. in order to take care of her family, her mother and brothers. Mm -hmm. There is also a lot that Nora does within her marriage. And, it, and that is basically to uphold the family, uh, you know, entity, and apart from the family entity, to also support the husband. Now, ask your students then to dig out evidence. Now, you, your job is not to list for them. Mm -hmm. Your job now, you have introduced. So they'll be giving you examples from the text from all over, and you probe them. And, and so you, you, have, you have engaged them more meaningfully on the theme of, uh, of women and or the role of women in, in society. After that, do not hang it there. Bring it down because you know that we will not ask you to discuss the role of women in cases in, in where, where, where the book was written. Mm -hmm. We will bring it down to our environment. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask you questions related to the role of women within our context. 
So, Professor, you are talking about um, the, the most important theme, as I can draw from Adult's House, the role of women in society. And you are, you are narrowing down to the women characters in this text, where we have Nora, we have Lind, and we also have maybe the maid there. And what you are saying is that women are important in driving some of the issues and running families in the society. And you are telling teachers that it's important to look at this text the way it is, how women are portrayed there. And then we go back to our students and ask them, what happens in your societies? How are women treated in those societies in order for them to have this interactive, real learning and literature? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to engage this particular theme further in our next episode. We will also be looking at other thematic concerns and I hope that uh, you will join us in uh, discussing these uh, other thematic concerns. This then brings us to the end of the first episode where we are looking at a doll's house. Madam Brenda Midika will be joining us again in our second part of our discussion. On behalf of my crew, Neka and Pambi, I would like to invite you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel so that you receive our updates. I am 